good evening everyone uh, can somebody please confirm me whether they can hear me or not can you hear me yes sir yeah thank you good evening everyone myself shankar rao phd scholar in the department of electrical engineering indian institute of technology hyderabad uh, so uh, today in today's class uh, actually uh, in the website we have mentioned like in today's class we will discuss about digital circuits but, but in our last discussion we were uh, talking about lti systems and we have seen uh, some of the properties and uh, some problems we have seen on lti systems Uh, we will also now in today's class also we will uh, see some more problems in lti systems and maybe somebody has asked uh, from sampling try to do one problem from sampling and if time permits we will uh, uh, go through some few problems from digital circuits or else in the next session we will uh, talk about digital circuits is that okay fine thank you so in our last class we were discussing about lti systems right if a system is linear plus time invariant then they are lti systems so the lti systems are characterized by the impulse response it is continuous one h of t a discrete one h of n so this impulse response will give the come about uh, the complete information about the system i uh, suppose you have an lti system with impulse response h of t and input is x of n then what you get is output sorry input is x of t what you get is output y of t so that is given by convolution of input and output sorry input and the system response and also we have seen like some of the uh, properties of lti systems so one is when an lti system is memoryless when it is stable when it is causal these things we have seen hope you have like you recollect it so when an lti system is causal when it is stable when it is memoryless these uh, things we have seen uh, and also some problems we have seen now based on that we will try to solve few more problems yeah this is the problem you can see here for an lti system the system is given in the form of a block diagram uh, so first thing is you need to find out the impulse response of the overall system and second uh, bit is is this system is causal under what conditions the system is stable so this is the question so some system is given you can see here okay just uh, have a look at the question then we'll solve it uh now this is the system it is given can somebody tell me uh, how to find out the impulse response for a system for an lti system you can feel free to unmute your mics and uh, answer me how to find out the impulse response fine let us say we have yeah. so we have an lti system okay if you give input as some impulse right then what we get is out, output we get some output that is nothing but the impulse response right i think this we have seen in our last class for an lti system suppose if you give input some impulse signal then we get some output that output let us say we are getting output y of n that output is nothing but the impulse response right that output is nothing but impulse response 
and also in the last in, in our last session we have seen like when two in lti systems are cascaded what's the overall impulse response and what when two lti systems are like parallel what is the overall impulse response that we have seen right so using all these um, proper properties we'll solve this problem now the first bit is we need to find out the impulse response for this so impulse response how to find out we will give input as impulse signal then what output you get that is nothing but the impulse response okay now so i am giving input x of n as del of n here i am giving impulse uh, input del of n so what we get here so if you see in the first part if you see these two are like parallel uh, parallel right so this is path gain is 1 you can say and here you have h1 of n is given so that is parallel right okay so when like two branches are in parallel then what we can add right we can add them right isn't it so it is what here what you get is One plus uh, one means here x of n plus right x of n so let us see here you have x of n. So what you will have here one plus beta into del of n minus one, okay? And here you have the next block alpha power n u of n, okay? Here you have output. So these two branches are parallel. So the overall one I have written one plus beta del of n minus one. Now to find out impulse response input I am giving del of n, okay? Then what output you will get? That is nothing but h of n, right? When input del of n, if I give, what output I get? That is nothing but uh, h of n. So what you get here? So you can see here these two blocks are in uh, what to say? Uh, they are in series. Let us say this is some h three of n. This is H two of n. So, what is the overall overall impulse response? Overall impulse response is nothing but H three of n convolved with H two of n, right? So, what you get is alpha power n u of n plus beta del of n minus one. Convolution alpha power n u of n. So total overall what you get alpha power n u of n plus beta alpha power n minus one u of n minus one. This is what we will get, right? So actually, uh, uh, here. Del of n we are giving input so here here actually this is so direct uh, instead of okay fine yeah so what you get is alpha power n u of n plus beta alpha power n minus one u of n minus one this is nothing but the overall impulse response of the system okay. The first two, these two blocks are parallel. Okay, then this block and this block are in cascaded. So based on that, we are getting the overall impulse response. So alpha power n u of n plus beta alpha power n minus one u of n minus one is the overall impulse response. Is that okay? Is that okay, or do you have any doubts in that?
uh, H3 of N uh, actually uh, so let me write this like this while writing small mistake I wrote here see here uh, see instead of x of n we are giving del of n we are giving so here what we get overall here here it, sorry here not, it is not 1 it is actually del of n so it is not 1 it is del of n so when del of n I am giving as input so this is del of n plus beta of del of n minus 1 okay and the next block is alpha power n u of n okay now actually here the first one is directly del of n is going not one actually del of n and the second block is this one del of n convolved with beta n minus 1 the same thing you will get del of n convolved with beta n minus 1 the same thing you will get the next one is alpha power n u of n so this you can say now h3 of n here earlier while i was writing i wrote one but it is del of n we can see here directly its del of n is going here so now let us say this is h2 of n now convolution is h3 of n convolved with h2 of n so let me write it again del of n plus beta del of n minus 1 convolved with alpha power n u of n okay so convolution with del of n the same function alpha power n u of n plus beta alpha power n minus 1 u of n minus 1 okay so this is h of n is that okay now now whether it is causal or not we can easily check here so if you see here alpha this the first term is exists only for alpha greater than sorry n greater than or equal to 0 and what about the second term this exists for n greater than or equal to 1 for other for n less than or equal to 0 clearly h of n is 0 we can see clearly u of n is all uh, non-zero for n greater than or equal to 0 right so h of n clearly we can see from here h of n is some non-zero for n greater than or equal to 0 and h of n is 0 for n less than 0 clearly we can say so the first second question is answered it is causal so what is the condition for causality oh, somebody is asked n minus 1 how sir here is it here n minus 1 here right a power n minus 1 right see we have this property i think last class also we have seen so any signal x of n convolved with some del of n minus n n naught this is convolution property of impulse x of n minus n naught okay here what we have is here we have alpha power n u of n convolved with del of n minus 1 so this thing will go here the property of convolution property so instead of n n minus n naught will come instead of n here n minus 1 will get here so alpha power n minus 1 u of n minus 1 that's what we got here so we have the impulse response so we know the condition for stability is what the area under the impulse response should be a finite quantity so sigma k equal to minus u of n is what let us say mod alpha greater than 1 let us say so 
when alpha is zero, then only right we can get the area this summation we can get the finite quantity right okay so here for stability when mod alpha less than 1 the system is stable less than infinity now what is is our impulse response here our impulse response is alpha power k u of k just now we have seen and alpha power k minus 1 u of k minus 1 just instead of n i replaced k so k equal to minus infinity to plus infinity but u of k we know for alpha k greater than or equal to 0 this is uh, existing rate uh, so what we get here k equal to 0 to uh, infinity alpha power k plus beta into k equal to 1 to infinity uh, we can say alpha power k minus 1 right so I can write write this alpha if I take common from here. I can take alpha okay, just I can take alpha common here. So what I get is sigma k equal to one to infinity or else. Okay, I'll just I'm I'm just taking alpha common k equal to one to infinity. So alpha in alpha power k into k minus 1 into alpha plus beta okay this is alpha power k minus 1 into alpha plus beta so if you see, if you can clearly see this is summable only when mod alpha less than 1 okay is alpha power k minus 1 into alpha plus beta so clearly you can see alpha and beta some constants okay this is only we can uh, it is absolutely summable only when mod alpha less than 1 okay so that is the condition for stability when not mod alpha less than 1 so the area under impulse response is finite quantity this is absolutely summable is that okay fine now we will see another question on the LTA, LTA systems only so you can see this question this question was given in gate 2016 ECE set 1 for 2 marks so the question is uh, this one a network consists of you can you can just go through the question once a network consists of a finite number of 
linear resistor, inductor, and capacitor elements connected all in series or parallel is excited. I'll come back to it. Somebody asked something. I'll come back to it. Uh, so all in series or all in parallel is excited with a source of the form. So this is the given. Okay. The source has non-zero impedance. Uh, which one of the following is a possible form of the output measured across a resistor in the network? Okay. So the question given is you have some source this one you have some source and you have some inductor capacitor and a resistor either in series or parallel let us say I am taking in series and you have some source this I will say some source V of T okay so we are given with some source V of T and also they have given okay the source has non-zero impedance some non-zero impedance it is having just I am not writing here which one of the following is a possible form of the output okay so how to do this is so this is an LTI system you can if you if you can see so and the question output is nothing but let us say voltage across the resistor that's what they're asking if you can see here this is an LTA system so linear elements it right? inductor capacitor resistor they are a linear elements so it is an LTA system I think in the previous classes earlier also I have uh, uh, just explained this proper property if we have an LTA system okay if an, we have an LTA system with some H of omega as its Fourier transform of impulse response okay H of T let us say impulse response H of omega is Fourier transform of impulse response now we have given some sinusoid signal cosine signal or uh, sine signal or exponential signal let us say I am giving some signal A cos omega naught t plus some theta. This is the signal I am giving. Now what is the output? Okay. So we have an LTA system with H of omega as its Fourier transform of its impulse response, frequency response. So we are giving some sinusoidal signal or some anything or uh, e power some j omega naught t like this so cosine signal sign signal or complex sign side okay the property of LTA system is so if you give a sign side signal output also you will give get the a sign side signal but there is some amplification in its amplitude and change in its phase okay so let us say h of omega this I can express like magnitude into some phase okay this magnitude let us say some k and phase let us say some phi okay now input I am giving a cos omega naught t what is the frequency here omega naught is the frequency now at omega naught we have to find out the magnitude that is h of omega naught magnitude and phase this kind of problem earlier we have solved okay magnitude and phase we have to find out and let us the magnitude at omega naught is k and phase at omega naught is phi then what is the output output is same as cosine signal but the magnet the amplitude is multiplied by the magnitude k and extra phase is added okay for an LTA system this a cos omega naught t plus theta f I am giving as input output is same as the signal shape will not be disturbed at all so cosine signal only I will get 
but there is an amplification in the magnitude so amplitude is multiplied with k and extra phase is added cos omega not t plus theta is the input signal and extra the phi is added okay so uh, so earlier also i think we have solved one problem on this now using this concept uh, let us come back to the problem so what is the input given input is what sigma k equal to 1 2 3 ak cos k omega not t so we have input some cosine signal so what is the input so a1 cos omega not t plus a2 cos 2 omega not t plus a3 cos 3 omega not t okay input given is this one now output also should be three signals so inputs we have three cosine signals so three harmonics are there definitely output also we should have three harmonics but the amplitude will change and there may be some phase will be added extra phase will be added that is the concept right based on whatever we have seen now you can see the options you can see the options uh, clearly input how many how many terms we have k equal to 1 2 3 ak cos k omega not t three terms we have k equal to 1 k equal to 2 k equal to 3 so so three terms we have output also we should have three terms so if you see here option b is having four terms we can eliminate it and option d we can given two terms we can eliminate it okay now option c and a we have three three terms that is okay now i said output the amplitude will be some kind of uh, like amplification will be there the amplitude will be multiplied by the gain at that frequency so, so earlier the ak is the amplitude of the input signal so a1 a2 a3 so the amplitude definitely will be multiplied by the gain sometimes the gain may be 1 so bk is the amplitude okay and some phase is added you can see here. is that okay so option a is the correct one if you see option c they have given ak as the amplitude but all the times it may not happen sometimes it may happen but every time it may not happen sometimes if the gain is one then it is okay if the gain is one then we will get ak as the output amplitude but all times will not happen so c also a special case it may be true all the time it is may not be true so option a is the correct option so ak is multiplied with something let us say ak is multiplied with some gain some kk that is nothing but bk so bk not equal to ak some phase 5k is added is that okay okay so if you have anyone anybody have like if you did not get means i'll explain one more thing i think we have already earlier also we have solved a problem on this fine thank you so since it is an lti system ha ah, definitely uh, bunty's question is amplitude and phase are changed in the all the harmonics definitely because see uh, let us say we have a1 cos omega naught t plus a2 cos 2 omega naught t plus a3 cos 3 omega naught t. Now, for first case, we have to find out amplitude and phase at omega naught t. Sorry, at omega naught for the first one frequency is omega naught for the second harmonic frequency is what 2 omega naught 
so for the second one amplitude and phase we need to find out at 2 omega naught similarly for third one 3 omega naught okay so at it depends it depends let us say it is having maybe for example i'm telling it is having h of omega like this constant one then amplitude is same at all the frequencies so different harmonics at omega naught 2 omega naught 3 omega naught amplitude will be same but maybe it may be having impulse uh, sorry it may be having uh, maybe let us say like this h of omega naught like this for example i'm telling then a different omega naught amplitude is different right okay for the three different harmonics at that frequency what is the amplitude sorry what is the magnitude and what is the phase of the uh, that lti system or h of omega we need to find out so here in the second case at 2 omega naught we have to find out for third case at 3 omega naught we have to find out so generally then they are different sometimes they may coincide all three may be equal it depends but always need not be equal is that okay Fine. Now, another property of LTA systems we'll see now. Let us say you have an LTA system. Okay. And if we give impulse as input, so what you get the output is nothing but impulse response. Let us see if I am given, let us continuous one, del of t, if I give input, output what we get is h of t. That is the impulse response. For an LTA system, if you give impulse as input, then what we get is the impulse response. Similarly, if the LTA system, if I give some step as input, then what you get at the output is nothing but the step response. Or, okay, S of n or else u of del uh, sorry suppose for the system if i am giving u of t as input then output what you get is nothing but the step response okay for an lta system if we give input impulse as input then what we get is nothing but impulse response and if we give step as input what we get is nothing but the step response so suppose if you know the impulse response of an lta system then we can find out the step response okay so the step response we can find out if you know the impulse response that is we know step is integration of impulse right step is integration of impulse so using this we can find out so we can find out h of tau d tau okay so if you know the impulse response of an lta system we can find out the step response by integrating the impulse response similarly in discrete case by summation we'll get if you know h of n then by summation we can get the step response okay suppose if you if you know the step response by differentiating the step response we can get impulse response okay so if you know the step response of an lta system by differentiating the step response we can find out the impulse response okay so this is a question based on this uh, just uh, you can see this the unit sample response of an LTA system is given by h of n is 0 0.6 power n u of n step response at, a, at n equal to 1 is given by something is given okay unit impulse response is given 
So in the question, it is asked to find out the step response at n equal to one. So just now we have seen. So the uh, step response is the summation of the impulse response. So this one, right? S of n is okay. Summation of the impulse response. So S of n is what? Sigma k equal to minus infinity to n point uh, six power n u of n point six power k u of k. Okay. Now we know u of k is non zero for k less than zero. That's why from zero to n only we can have u of n is one, right? Otherwise it is zero. So this is a GP, right? GP of n times y infinite to t where where i did not get somebody has asked y minus infinite to t ha yes from minus infinite to t only h of tau d tau This one minus infinity t only. Generally from zero we will take initial conditions uh, will take zero from zero to t till we can say from minus infinity to t also. Fine. This is G P of n times, right? One plus. Point six plus point six power square plus one up to point six power n, so it is like one minus point six power so this is. Ah, uh, okay. But in the question, it was asked to find out step response at n equal to one. We need to find out. So this is the summation, right? Now in the question, it is asked to find out s of one at n equal to one. We need to find out that is one is one minus square by one minus point six. So this is one plus point six into One minus point six, so we will get one point six dance. Is that okay? The integration can be minus infinity to up to t. We can have, okay. Is that okay? Uh, the question. So n equal to one. Mm. Uh, sorry, there are how many terms are there? From zero to n, we have we have n plus one terms are there, right? Sorry, here. Yeah, we have n plus one terms are there. So one, so uh, yeah, n plus one terms we we have. So sum of n plus one terms. Sorry, here we'll get this one. 
so this is a a r like that a r square so a r power n we have up to n so we have sum of n plus 1 times so sum of n plus 1 times is this one i missed the 10 plus 1 is that okay so gp sum of m times in gp but here we have n plus 1 times since k is starting from 0 up to n is that okay Fine. Now another question on this, I'm just writing out here, an LTI system with input, another question similar to this, we'll see, an LTI system with input U of N produces an output of del of n okay i'm not writing the question just uh, i'm reading out an lti system with input u of n produces an output del of n then find the output due to input n u of n Okay, so an LTA system is given when u of n is the input, then output is del of n. Now we need to find out what is the output for the input n u of n. For this input, what is the output we need to find out? So what is given here is this is an LTA system. Okay when you give u of n output you are getting del of n that means what operation is going on here the operation is u of n minus u of n minus 1 right then only we will get difference operation right difference operation exactly so the system is doing difference operation That means if we give x of n as input, then it is producing output x of n minus x of n minus 1, right? Then only, right? If u of n we are giving as input, then u of n minus u of n minus 1, we get del of n, right? That means the system is doing the difference operation. So this is the, you can see impulse response, okay? So it is doing difference operation. Now when we give n of u of n, n into u of n as input, so what we get output? The difference operation x of n minus x of n minus 1. So x of n is n u of n minus n minus 1 u of n minus 1 okay so when input is n u of n the same the difference operation so we need to simplify this that's it so n if we take common u of n minus u of n minus 1 so plus u of n minus 1 okay and n into del of n plus u of n minus 1 but del of n is this first term is 0 del of n is 1 at n equal to 0 that means this is 1 only when n is 0 the first term is 0 so output is u of n minus 1 okay so actually later stages we will solve this using some dtft or jet transforms we will find out the transfer function from that we will uh, find out the any other response we can find out
later in a simpler way we will do but uh, here the output is the difference operation that's what we have to do here is that okay Mm. Yeah, a DTFS I will do, but earlier we have solved some problems, but uh, uh, in, like based on the problems, I solved some gate questions related topics I covered from uh, DTFS and or DTFT. Maybe later classes I will cover uh, because I, I have to take one class from digital electronics. Maybe I'll cover some problems, previous problems. Maybe later, uh, after that, I'll uh, cover DTFT and uh, DTFS. Or yeah, DFS, sorry, DFS. Okay. Uh, actually, digital, I'll take uh, some, um, from previous year get questions. I'll solve some problems related topics or concepts I'll cover or if you require any of the topics you can tell me now those topics also I'll cover. So generally we will take some we are assigned some problems so those problems and related topics generally we cover but as per your requirement uh, we will cover some other topics also like just like I'm covering LTA systems now and last class somebody has asked. So what topics you want you can just uh, text me here uh, in the chat so along with those problems those topics also will cover. Fine. Uh, now I think we'll start next class digital. So some other problems we'll see now. This is another problem from this is given in gate 20, uh, 2015 EC set three for two marks. This is on sampling. I think in earlier classes I have covered. Uh, you can see I guess 17th and 24th of August. Those classes sampling have covered so we'll try to directly solve the problem here so the problem is consider a continuous time signal defined as it's given a continuous time signal is given and we need to find out the nyquist sampling rate How to find out? So, so I think earlier you can refer my previous uh, lectures. So there, suppose if we have signal x of t, okay, and its Fourier transform is x of omega okay so the sampled version of signal let us say x del of t okay its Fourier transform is x del of omega so x of t is the signal its sampled version of signal is x del of t how to get the sampled version of signal signal multiplied by train of impulses will get sampled version of signal so this is equal to 1 by Ts sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity x of omega minus n omega s. This we have covered. This we have derived also. So this is the Fourier transform of the sampled version of the signal. Okay. Now let us say we have some signal x of t and it is given to a sampler okay with some sampling frequency omega s yes. so we will get sampled version of the signal now 
we will do some operation we will transmit it something like that after that we we need to successfully recover the signal back okay so we have a continuous signal here so here we will get the sampled version of the signal okay now if you want to retrieve back the original signal from the sampled version of the signal we use some low pass filter or reconstruction filter we use okay from this we will get the original signal okay generally in the reconstruction filter we use some low pass filter so impulse response magnitude response of the reconstruction filter i am just drawing here something like this okay now this is the fourier transform of the sampled signal x del of omega is this one fourier transform of the sampled signal that means it is what the fourier transform of the sampled signal is this one x of omega plus x of omega minus omega s plus x of omega minus 2 omega s something like this x of omega plus 2 omega s plus so on up to infinity we will have infinite terms now we want to reconstruct the signal so let us say here what is omega s omega s is nothing but the sampling frequency this is 2 pi fs or 2 pi by ts it depends on that sampling interval or sampling frequency now so let us say our x of t here x of t this is Fourier transform is x of omega right let us say our x of t is a band limited signal x of t Fourier transform is some low pass signal that means band limited signal or low pass signal this is x of omega okay let us say its frequency response is something like this its Fourier transform it is band limited signal that means it is having frequencies from 0 to omega m from 0 to omega maximum frequency is omega m now if you see the Fourier transform of the sampled version of signal is what x of omega plus shifted version right shift left shift like this okay so that means the Fourier transform of the sampled version of the signal if we, if we take Fourier transform of sampled signal we will get something like this okay we will get something like this so this is x of omega then after that it is shifted by an amount of omega s yes, right so next shifted by omega s yes. next one is shifted by 2 omega s yes. this is shifted by left shift by minus omega s yes. like this so this is what this frequency is omega s minus omega m because this width is omega m right and this is omega s plus omega m this is minus omega s plus omega m okay nothing i'm doing so omega let us say omega x of omega we know so this is the fourier transform of the sample signal let's say something like this the spectrum will be now so this is nothing but the guard band so between successive let us say uh, harmonics this is nothing but the guard band okay now actually if you want to successfully recover the signal using a low pass filter that means this will be passed through a low pass filter reconstruction filter whose impulse response is this one so we will get x of t as output now if we have low pass filter like this then what it will do only it will allow only the x of omega component only it will, it will allow and all other components it will reject 
all other components it will reject okay this is possible only when when this is possible that means there should not be any overlap between this and this okay suppose if there is a overlap like this this is x of omega and if there is some overlap like this x of omega this one this is x of omega minus omega s yes. this is x of omega plus omega s yes. if there is some overlap then we cannot successfully recover the signal because there is a overlap we will get some distortion okay na so without overlapping if you want to extract only x of omega to reject all other harmonics so what is the condition so lower edge of this lower edge of this should be always greater than upper edge of this okay then only we can recover so let me draw it clearly okay so lower edge of this what is lower edge of this omega s minus omega m upper edge of this omega m there should not be any overlap then only we can retrieve the signal for that condition is omega s minus omega m at least it should be at least more than omega m so from this what we get omega s greater than or equal to 2 omega m then only we can at least okay na so this is called nyquist straight right so omega m is what maximum signal frequency this one when the sampling rate is at least two times the maximum signal frequency then only we can re recover back the signal okay that is the condition how we derive this condition fs greater than or equal to 2 fs something like that nyquist criteria is the lower limit is fs equal to 2 fm sorry fs equal to 2 fm now when we uh, coming back to this problem they are asking the nyquist sampling rate so to find out the nyquist sampling rate we should know okay fine uh, so those you want to join the next class you can join just i'll finish this problem and maybe you can see it in the recording okay yeah so here nyquist sampling rate they are asking so we need to find out fs that is nothing but 2 times of fm but for this we need to find out what is the maximum frequency of this we need to find out that we don't know okay that means we need to find out x of omega x of omega we have to find out from this we will find out what is the maximum frequency of this omega m or fm we will find out so from this fs is 2 times of fm okay now so x of t two components are there here we if we can see two components are there so let us say this is some the first signal is let us say some x1 of t and second signal is x2 of t so here x1 of t convolved with x2 of t right so what will be x of omega is the product right in the fourier transform that is x1 of omega into x2 of omega okay so what in i am just saying the first signal as x1 of t so the first signal is x1 of t we have convolution in between second signal x2 of t now the fourier transform x of omega is nothing but product of the fourier transform of individual ones x of x1 of omega x2 of omega now for this yeah sin phi by 2 so the x1 of t is what on this one i'll just write out here so x1 of t is what sin phi by 2t by phi by 2t so this i can write we know sin 
CAT by pi t. Its Fourier transform very well we know. Fourier transform of this part. Omega domain only. I will solve this. Minus A two plus A. This one. This is the Fourier transform of this x one of omega lattice. So in the similar way, I can write the signal like this. Sine pi by two t by pi t. So what is the Fourier transform of this? That is nothing but x one of omega. It's two into two into what is a here? A is pi by two. So we will have minus pi by two to plus pi by two omega. This is x one of omega. Okay. Similarly, what is x two? X two is this signal, right? Del of t minus Ten n. So x two of t is given. X two of t is sigma del of t minus ten n, right? N equal to minus infinity to plus infinity. So its Fourier transform. Directly, I am writing. Um, uh, so I am not going to derive here. It will take some time to derive this. So in the interest of time, directly I am writing. Suppose if I have train of impulse response T minus n T S, okay, so n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity. It is impulse train. Its Fourier transform is two pi by T S sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity del of omega minus n. Omega s. Yes. This is the Fourier transform. So earlier classes also I used this. Okay, this one sigma n equal to this one. So that means you have some impulse train like this. Zero T s, two T s like this minus T s. You have impulse train like this. So this is the Spacing between two samples is T s, so omega s is nothing but two pi f s, that is two pi by T s. Okay, its Fourier transform again you will get impulse strain only this one. Its Fourier transform again you will get impulse strain only. That is what two pi by T s into integral n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity, del of omega minus n omega s. Okay. So, so what is omega s here? Omega s is what here for us? Two pi into T s is how much? T s is ten here. You can see here. T s is ten here. So, right? So this is T s. T s is ten here. So two pi by ten. So omega s is pi by five. Okay. That means. From this, so what you got x two of omega, what we get two pi by T s into sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity del of omega minus pi by five into n. This is the Fourier transform of x two. So we have x one of omega, we have x two of omega, we have X two of omega also we have. So what we want x of omega. X of omega is what x one of omega into x two of omega. So what is our x of omega? X one of omega into x two of omega. Now x one of omega already we know. So I'm just again. Drawing here for clear understanding, minus pi by two to plus pi by two. This is x one na omega, and x two. Uh, this one me. This is what x two of omega is. This one right. So impulse train again. It is impulse train at n equal to zero. At n equal to pi by five. 
10 equal to 2 pi by 5 10 equal to 3 pi by 5 like this so on and also here at 10 equal to minus pi by 5 minus 2 pi by 5 minus 3 pi by 5 so on up to now the product also there is 2 pi by ts is what 10 so there is 2 pi by 10 some scaling factor is there okay yeah navish yeah tell me you have raised it in your hand so amplitude equal to 2 how sir you are asking yeah amplitude is 2 here because you see in the question it is given sin pi by 2t by pi by 2t right so this 2 i am writing here so this is in the form of sin at by pi t right sin at by pi t if sin at by pi t means amplitude 1 but extra this 2 is there right that's why amplitude we will have 2 here is that okay navish sorry navneet fine now so this multiplication we have to do so what we will get here after multiplication so up to 2 pi by 5 so pi by 2 so up to pi by 2 pi by t is somewhere here right pi by 2 somewhere here after multiplying only these 5 only will become non zero all other will be multiplied with zero right pi by 2 means 90 right pi by 2 is 90 2 pi by 5 means what pi by 5 is 36 this is 72 this is 108 that means you have non zero amplitude you have to multiply both the signals so only we are left with only those 5 so 0 at pi by 5 at 2 pi by 5 and remaining all become 0 just am doing the multiplication of two signal amplitude will be 2 pi into 2 pi by 10 here the amplitude is 2 here the amplitude is 2 pi by 10 so amplitude is 2 pi by 5 okay now this is our x of omega this is our x of omega now what is the maximum frequency in this this is the maximum frequency omega m is maximum frequency okay our x of m will have half maximum frequency of 2 pi by 5 maximum frequency 2 pi by 5 okay now till now what we found out is what is the maximum frequency in this signal so in this x of t what is the maximum frequency we have found out that is omega s omega m how much we got 2 pi by 5 we got maximum frequency so that means f s is what 1 by 5 okay so from this we can find out the Nyquist rate okay you got it right so till now we found out x of omega so why we found out x of omega means to find out the maximum frequency so omega m is 2 pi by 5 so what is fm omega m by 2 pi right because omega m is 2 pi fm so fm what we get is 1 by 5 is the fm we got so in the question it is asked the nyquist rate nyquist rate is nothing but fs is 2 times the fm 2 by 5 2 by 5 is 0 0.4 0 0.4 is the answer okay so for this answer is 0 0.4 so Mamnesh is asking one second explain about the maximum frequency now what we are finding out here 
x of omega fourier transform we are finding out okay na so this everything whatever steps we have done is to find out the fourier transform of the input signal that is x of omega now this is the input signal right fourier transform of in input signal that we got this one this is the fourier transform of input signal x of omega now in this what is the maximum frequency 2 pi by 5 right this is the maximum frequency right we have we have only five impulses at 0 pi by 5 2 pi by 5 and negative frequency is minus pi by 5 minus 2 pi by 5 that means we have the maximum frequency is what 0 is minimum maximum is 2 pi by 5 so this is nothing but the maximum signal frequency 2 pi by 5 is that okay so nyquist state is two times of the maximum signal frequency is that okay navneet okay multiplication is not clear yeah see you have this signal minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 this is x1 na omega okay and this we need to multiply with this impulse train zero 2 pi by 5 sorry pi by 5 2 pi by 5 so on like that 3 pi by 5 so we have like 2 pi by 10 this is the amplitude now while multiplying how we will multiply so at zero you have impulse and here in x x2 of omega at zero you have impulse at zero what is the signal frequency signal amplitude here 2 okay at zero you will have non zero value you will get at 2 pi by 5 also at 2 pi by 5 also you have some non zero value sorry pi by 5 at pi by 5 also we have some non zero value so we have at pi by 5 also we have similarly at 2 pi by 5 also so here 2 pi by 5 you have impulse here also 2 pi by 5 somewhere here we have non zero value but if you see 3 pi by 5 3 pi by 5 means somewhere here we will get 3 pi by 5 3 pi by 5 means somewhere here we will get so what is the amplitude here zero right so now zero multi this 3 pi by 5 this impulse multiplied with zero you will get zero here 4 pi by 5 again the amplitude is zero you got it right similarly negative frequencies also at minus pi by 5 you have non zero amplitude multiply similarly at minus 2 pi by 5 but at minus 3 pi by 5 zero amplitude right in x1 of omega so you will get zeros is that okay So at each n you have to multiply the amplitudes at each n okay uh, fine uh, we will stop here next class uh, we will solve some uh, some topics from digital electronics will solve fine thank you